Oh. Uh, yeah. Hi. <laughs> <Joe started. laughs> yeah. Uh, now that now that we're all ready. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Just all right. right. <laughs> Damn right. Damn right. <laughs> Alex is just cleaning off his keys, you know. Yeah, yeah, just you know, you know, I'm all about hygiene and having clean keys, you know. Have it snow up your nose. That's a joke, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we need to tell you that. <laughs> you never know with us. Anyway, we're a minute in. I might as well tell you where you are. You have arrived at. This is the future. Unfortunately. That's right. That's uh, beautiful, Alex Rios over there. We're over there. And that's uh, the gorgeous, as, uh, as always, Tony G. You bet your boots, mister. Ooh, <laughs> I, got the, I got the lips. Lips Is that <laughs> lip service? Is that what that is? It is, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, we've already I've been talking way too long without, you know, introducing a beverage into the atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, I would, you know, I was just thinking, if you did that in a bar, especially two years ago, you'd scare the shit out of people. <laughs> Yeah. Mask. Yeah. <laughs> you know something I've been doing lately uh, to fuck with people. I go to a lot of amusement parks, but what I've been doing lately is just walking by, like people rushing up to a ride, and I'm walking. You know, I've already left the ride. I just, I just mummer, it's closed, it's closed. I just say that as I walk by people, I just say it's closed, and just keep walking. Just to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's closed. It's closed. Oh, They're like, oh. "Fuck the ride's closed," but it's closed. It's closed. <laughs> I just keep going. I just put it out there and keep going. I'm just finding more fun ways to fuck with people. <laughs> like your Rain Man or something. Like it's like well, not that bad. Not like, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely closed. Yeah, definitely. Close, definitely closed. Close, definitely yeah, close, close. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kmart sucks. Kmart sucks. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that ride sucks. It's definitely closed. Yeah, definitely closed. Yeah. Oh, Mother, what happened? Did drop your pocket. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? You just stood on his dick. I've seen it happen before. No, my the house I live in is very old. It was built in like 1920, some shit. So like, there's like, first of all, there's like no outlets in the house because you know there wasn't as much like electronics back then or any. Um, or whatever <laughs> it was all hand powered yeah so but like in all the light sockets like are shitty you plug something in and it just goes and yeah. it like and it like barely hangs on so if you just like hit the cord it'll it'll just it'll you know turn off and then like you kind of just like kick the cord again and it'll kind of go back in and my computer's completely dead so that's why it's plugged in right now so i was like kick trying to kick it so it wouldn't turn off you know, in the middle of this. <laughs> I'm a fucking professional. And I think we've, you know, all noticed that. Well, all of a sudden, I just hear that song, that old school fucking song. Um, I'm on a low budget. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah. I'm on a low budget. <laughs> fucking yeah, I'm, I fucking am right now. I'll tell you that. Hey, the whole damn country's getting on a low budget. They just don't know it yet. So don't That's... worry. <laughs> Coming no. for all of us. I'm special. It's just me. Mm. Uh, that you are, sir. How you doing, Tony? How are you? How was your week? It's good, man. It's good. I'm smiling and dialing, I'm selling shit. So that's fun. Um, what else? Went to a fucking uh, went to a, the drive-in that I like to go to and saw. Um, they played some old school, old school fucking movies. We saw the the Mummy, the original Mummy from 1920, 30 something. Cool. And I've never, I've never, ever, ever watched an old movie like that. Never. And what blew my mind is like, and like my dad said, he's like, well, they didn't have any fucking side, no, nothing. You know, it was just acting. And then you had to figure the rest out for yourself. So whenever someone died, like what's funny was the mummy, the mummy was killing people by basically giving most of them heart attacks. And so it was all acting. Like the mummy would just stand there and like his face would get dark and skullish. And then the other person, like the mummy wouldn't even be near the person, just be fucking with their head. And the other person be like, ah, ah. I'm just like, Whoa, this is great, man. This guy's going to fucking die. Like they were really <laughs> acting. It was all <laughs> acting. It wasn't any of that bullshit they do now. You know, yeah. you know it was, he had to act it out. And imagine having like doing that a hundred times, you know, like take another heart attack. Let's go. 
by the end you probably have a real fucking heart attack makes you wonder but um yeah yeah he might actually have one <laughs> right exactly but like oh i like that one but uh yeah he's not getting up boss well we'll use it that's fine <laughs> yeah it's a real, a real um method actor you know a real uh Oh, yeah. Well, the funny thing was in another scene, they killed like someone died. But the only way you knew is because it happened off off camera and someone just dropped the book. It was just like, like, that was it. Like, <laughs> I was like, he's dead. <laughs> and it's fun because you're like using your imagination. Be like, maybe he peeled his skin off. <laughs> right. Like, you think whatever you want. I like, I like that because it's like, yeah, there's not there's not a lot to it. There's not all this like fancy you know, green screen, all this bullshit. No, it's just, like, it's no. just acting. It's like, and yeah. it makes you use your imagination like you were just saying. You were just saying that, like, maybe he's peeling his skin off. Maybe he's, like, you know, getting butt fucked. Who knows? Like, who knows what's happening, you know? You never <laughs> know. So, I just like that. that it <laughs> makes you use your imagination. <laughs> well, now we know what your imagination, how that works. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> now you know. You've always, it's always... <laughs> I'm sending you a shirt that just says butt sex on it, and that's it. <laughs> but fucking. All right. <laughs> All Can't right. wear that one into Chuck E. Cheese, but you could wear mine in there. Yeah, well, I'm 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 in the rat suit, you know, so they won't see it. <laughs> Wouldn't that be neat if you like took your rat suit head off and pulled down your rat suit body and it just said butt fucking on your t-shirt? <laughs> but yeah. you're on break <laughs> eating a slice, and the kids yeah. are like you know, you know, Chucky, and you're like, fuck off, I'm busy. <laughs> yeah, like, you just have, like, suspenders on, just have the bottom, like, like, the, 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 the legs and the waist of the rat. Yes. Eating yes. a slice of the beer. Get the fuck out of here, kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, God. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, Krusty oh, the Clown God. with the top half missing. Uh, oh, you know, if you, it, just by looking at me, you would think that I would have that job, you know. Uh, you, you got plenty of time, dude. There's plenty of time in your life to get that gig. I, I will, I will split the hours with you. <laughs> That's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> now for the night shift. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's skinnier than the last one. <laughs> Where'd that fat rat go? <laughs> First we had the cokehead. Now we got the tweaker in the suit. Damn it. <laughs> Hey, oh, let me, yeah, let's start a business. We'll um, uh, be like a mascot for birthdays or whatever. We'll, you know, be like this scary, <laughs> terrifying, coked out rat. <laughs> oh, my God. That's like, what, what's that? Um, ah, shit, I'm having a total brain fart. I'm trying to think of a damn. Um, I can't even think of the uh, Rodney Dangerfield when he played. Um, what the fuck is that movie where? He was a he was a camera photographer or whatever, and the the point of the movie was is that his mother in law died was died and left the will, but he had to get his life together. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, he has a puppet, right? He has a puppet. He has a puppet where he tries to t he takes kids' pictures for a living, and he's sitting there and he's like, "Look at look at the bunny, look at the bunny," and a couple of joints fall out of the out of the bottom of the bunny, <laughs> and he's like, and he's like, "Oh, Bobby Bunny just dropped a few carrots. That's all. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> that's not snow, kids." That's 20 bucks a gram. <laughs> Bobby the Buddy. <laughs> Just oh, great. So that was your week, dude. Oh, it was pretty good. Um, Just, uh, fuck, man, I, don't, I can't even like, remember what happened. Um, oh, oh, so a story that um, it was uh, to, to be continued about my friend that was lost, my drunk yes. friend. Okay, so <laughs> did I tell you that I hid his shoes from him when he was over? Right. Okay, so I hid his shoes from him. And um, he was blacked out, drunk, like by like 6.30. And at night or in the morning? And, and, and at night, so like 6.37, something like that. So those of you that didn't watch the last episode, my my big fat friend <laughs> he, he he we had a little little party uh last week and we had a few people over and you know we had like a, a little cookout drinks tequila you know just real nice romantic time real good and uh my friend big fat friend he got a 
he, well, we all got drunk, but he got really drunk and I hid, I hid his shoes from him before he blacked out. And I was trying to give him hints of where they were and he couldn't find <laughs> them. And then I didn't know he was blacked out at the time and I showed him where his shoes were. But before all this, um, or after all, after all this, um, he like went missing basically. <laughs> He, he got so drunk that, like, he just, like, he left. So at, like, 2.30 or 30, 2 30 in the morning, I couldn't find him. I don't know where he was. His shoes were in the front room. He took them off, and he left. Hmm. So what happened was he, I gave him his shoes, right? He put them on. He walked to the store, and he got more white claws and cigarettes. Has no recollection of that. And then... <laughs> We went inside to watch TV and just kind of fall asleep on the couch. And he took off his shoes. And I woke up in bed. And then I kind of like, and I like got up at like 3 or 3.30 to let the dog out. She wanted to go pee. And he was sitting on the front porch drinking and smoking. So I was like, whatever, it's fine. And then I woke up. He's not in the upstairs bedroom. He's not in the basement. He's not on the couch. He's not on the porch. He's nowhere, but his shoes are. And then I finally got a hold of him, and I just, I was like, where are you? Like, I'm worried. I don't know where you are. I just got a text that said, doing community shit. Whatever that is, doing community shit. And then I guess his phone died. He came over uh, the next day to get his shoes, and um, I was like, what happened? He was like, I went to uh, North Portland and doing some community shit with my friend. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. He's like, can I have my shoes back? I'm like, yeah, they're right here. He's like, you hid them from me. But I'm like, yeah, I told you where they were. You put them on, you walked to the store, you had them on but half the night. He's like, oh, I don't remember any of that. The whole day I was mad at you because I thought you hid my shoes from me and I had to go get an Uber <laughs> with, with no shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, you had your shoes on. You were just blacked out drunk. And the last thing you remember is I hid that I that I hid your shoes from you, but then I showed you where they were. <laughs> so what so, you're saying uh, is Alex is a nice guy. <laughs> like I did the right thing. <laughs> yeah. So um he's okay. <laughs> and he has his shoes. And we do we know what the community shit is or no? No fucking idea what that means. No idea. <laughs> well back to back to our last story now it leaves the imagination to wander free and imagine what did happen maybe he does he you know someone dropped a book who knows <laughs> yeah. and maybe the, maybe the you know the mummy could have showed up and given him a heart <laughs> community shit on a saturday that's kind of sounds like you know a gangbang that you don't want to admit you know it's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe. Hey, listen, I don't want to tell, but I, I said I'd do it, and I'm going to do it. I just need my shoes to go do it. That's all. Yeah, it's sticky. Uh... <laughs> so community shit turns into, all we're all sleeping with Becky. I like that. Okay, got it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's cool, man. I'm glad it all worked out. Yeah, he's uh, he's fine. Well, he, I, don't know, I mean, who knows what's going on with him right now, but. Right. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. Um, but as far as this week, I don't know. Uh, it's just a pretty normal, chill week, I think. You know, worked that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. Yeah, nothing. You know, nothing too uh, too spectacular. But yeah, same. Nothing too fucking crazy. Nothing. I, I don't know. I'm bored. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I am. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to save up money for a uh, Las Vegas. I'm going to Las Vegas in the middle. of uh, in the middle of September. So. Sweet. Why? Uh, my friend and I are going to see a a, gra a grappling tournament, a jiu-jitsu tournament. Fuck. It's, it's like a thing he wanted to do. And he bought a ticket. He bought me a ticket. And I'm like, sure, I'll, you know, I'll go. It's in Las Vegas. I haven't, dude, I, haven't, dude I, haven't, I would buy tickets to that fucking show to see you in Vegas. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> oh my god. I would love to. Be, yeah, I had to do that sometime, man. We got to pull. I, I still want to pull a fear and loathing, but like with it. Oh, yeah. But I want a convertible, 
like a shitty like a, a VW Rabbit convertible that yeah. runs on diesel. Like I want it to be low budget as fuck, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, well, yeah. We need the whole bit, you know. We need Hawaiian shirts, <laughs> you know? oh, dude. You could totally do it. <laughs> Just get a bag full of drugs, but they're all legal, you know, like just weird, like, I don't know, like stuff for your bladder and shit, you know, like... yeah. <laughs> so if we get pulled over, it's like, what the fuck is this? Like, it's all legal. Oh, yeah. It's just a bunch of bladder. <laughs> you got you, do one of you have an issue? No, it's a shitload of Flomax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, for those of you who don't know, apparently Flomax gives you a little bit more uh, juice for your gun. Um, so, yeah, it would be fun. <laughs> like, just have a, just a big fuck, like a really big two arm bottle of Flomax strapped yeah. in the back seat with a seatbelt. And we get pulled over. And we just pull, you have to get the lid off with two hands, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, you want one? <laughs> <laughs> We're sniffing Flomax, yeah. <laughs> My nose is so hard <laughs> and running <laughs> like a fucking faucet. Oh, that'd be great, man, dude. You're gonna have fun in Vegas, man. That's a that's you'd probably be roasting your ass off. It's still warm yeah. down there. That'll be fun though. What uh, is it in a, a convention center, casino, uh, something like that? I'm sure. Oh man, or some maybe some, you know, banquet hall of some casino i'm sure fuck yeah i've I've had fun there but i want to have some more fun there's just something about being fucked up and being able to walk through these crazy casinos like paris you know the paris casino that it just blows my mind i'm all fucked up I'm like Wah! let's get some cheese sticks i love it yeah. it's a i've always had good times in vegas i this will be the longest i've ever stayed in vegas how long are you going three days three nights that's all, and that's the longest, and that's a that's a day over how long you should stay. Well, I hope you, you survive. Only do two nights. You should only do two nights. <laughs> anything, anything more than forty eight hours, you're fucked. And uh, you know, see how it goes. You know. Well, you're lucky. I'm not going, dude. I'd have you drunken on all the roller coasters. It'd be fucking disgusting. Well. I'll, I'll make sure to FaceTime you. You know, you give me some bad ideas. I'll go do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work on them right now. <laughs> you know what you could do? You could do that. You could you could collect a bunch of those cards because they you know they they flip yeah. the cards to get yeah. I always I liked when I got drunk one time. I got a bunch of those cards and I stood there and did it. I was like, I was like just. I was, I took the job. I was like, I'll do it. I'll do it. And I just started giving them to people. <laughs> I was like soliciting <laughs> prostitution. I'm like, Woo! Yeah, I'll, I'll bring, uh, I'll get, I'll try to get as many cards as I can and I'll, I'll bring them back and I'll mail them. I'll mail them to you. <laughs> so you could have them and you could stand on the street. And, and, and fill uh, you know what you do with those? You wait till <laughs> I get into some serious relationship with somebody. And yeah. then you start putting them in my pockets and shit. Don't tell me about it. Just hide them. Like in my car, like for the rest of my life, <laughs> and I have to keep oh, explaining you're giving it. Me a bad idea to ruin your life. <laughs> yes, I'm telling you how to fuck me up. I'm like, do it, do it, oh, damn it, do it. Because <laughs> if she doesn't get it, then she ain't the one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> or, or she's just like, yeah, we should call. Ooh, <laughs> marry me. <laughs> <laughs> but first call her. First call. Yeah, definitely call. <laughs> I've done that. I've called that number, and it's not the way it's the, it's it's not what it looks like. I mean, it's worse. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. Um, it's not great. It's, it's not. It's well, not. I mean, I was. She was like, "That's how much it costs to get me to show up." I'm like, "Okay, so how much does it cost for a handshake?" <laughs> Fuck, how much can I afford? I have like yeah. seven dollars now. <laughs> like, cost you a hundred and five just to get here? Where the fuck do you live, Texas? God damn. Uh, I have a story that's probably too much information, but um, when I was living in San Francisco, um, I met this. Uh, I met I met a couple comedians before I started doing comedy, mm -hmm. and um, like one person I worked with, and then just uh, this girl that like I met at like a neighborhood bar, then being a friend and having talked to him, yeah, the whole time I moved back, and there were. Um, there's actually kind of another funny story, but her and I 
and like one of her friends went to a strip club in San Francisco. And I don't know if you've ever been to strip clubs in San Francisco, but they're pretty crazy. They they rival Portland strip clubs. Ooh. So this is a little. T- <laughs> I was 21, 22, long time ago. This is what happened though. We were there. We got there like an hour before close. They closed. And I guess what they did, and I was told this afterwards, after I experienced it, is in most San Francisco strip clubs kind of turn into a brothel after hours. <laughs> so I was young, shy, like I really haven't came out, came out of the box yet. Like as far as being social, it's still kind of like weird and awkward, you know, not like this fucking charming... <laughs> Definitely your guy that you see now. But mm-hmm. um but so we were hanging out and three dancers came up to the two other people as well, so the three of us, and like you know, grabbed both grabbed us, one dancer per, and took us upstairs. And this dancer took me uh in, into a room, right? And she's like, Do you like Brazilian women? I'm like yeah sure I don't know. <laughs> and, and she's like how much money you have and i pulled out like like a a bunch of crip, like crumpled up ones like 19 dollars. it's like this is all i have <laughs> and i just, and then she just grabbed it <laughs> smacked me with her tit in the face and told me to leave <laughs> 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 that's what you get for 19 dollars yeah she didn't I, even I, count it she yeah, knew yeah. She, i was just like oh it's a, uh, hmm. uh, here, here. <laughs> like it was literally like i had to be like i had to like stand up to get the money out of my front pockets you know i was just like and she's looking at me like and it's like <laughs> push me back down, slap me in the face, and go get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> you know, it's funny in Thailand for nineteen dollars, you've gotten laid three times, <laughs> <laughs> and still had left over for McDonald's. I know it. Yeah, oh, it's fucking funny. Three different kinds of STDs. Oh, dude, I'm telling you, man. Shit, yeah, that shit's freaking me out right now. Now, with like monkeypox, but it's basically kind of a new STD. Not, not a new one, but an old one. What? Yeah. Well, we'll talk about that next week. But <laughs> let me do a little more research. <laughs> yeah. But, um. Hey, dog. Excuse me. I got to throw something at my dog. Hey. Good. <laughs> Make sure she's still good, huh? Well, she's got a spot on her that she's not supposed to be licking. She's mm-hmm. over there licking it. So I'm like, yeah. Hey. What's up? <laughs> right, we go. Don't All worry. Right. I'm not hitting her with anything. I'm just trying to get her to stop. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. She's and, like, <laughs> and just so you know, the dog's wearing a helmet and she's trained. Don't worry. Stunt ready. All right. Um, so we've uh we've stumbled upon a few new ideas as we've done the show. Uh, a new concept that we came up with last week is um called what do we call it? The un unfortunate topic of the week is what we're going with. So um it doesn't mean it's necessarily unfortunate, just bear with us, you'll see what we're getting at here. But we try to go for something interesting, some kind of interesting piece of news. So the one that uh, we stumbled upon this week is um, Narcan uh, dispensers, right? Vending machines is the way to put it. Narcan vending machines. This is, um, for those of you who don't know, a little bit of background uh, to combat the the opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. Long story short, that some states have, well, Narcan is the number one thing that brings people out of an an overdose. Um, especially now that shit's laced with fentanyl, it's 10, 100 times more potent than heroin. So people are getting fucked up left and right. Um, yeah. So I looked, I saw, an, I saw a, a deal where Austin, Texas, just got their first Narcan dispenser. 
um, you basically, you know, you, you get you get two shots out of the. They, they give you a mask. They give you all the instructions. Um, so long story short, those are out there. Narcan vending machines. They're not in every state yet that I looked at, but they are. There's one in Philadelphia. Um, or a couple. Long story short, the one thing, not to make a joke, but to kind of make a joke. The funny thing is, in Philly, they decided to put the first one at the library. I just kind of thought that was interesting. <laughs> you know, be like, it's like, what if you like sober up and you're like, you look at the library, you'd be like, it's a sign, man. Like, I need to read books. I need to get my shit together. You know, it's just, I don't know. I just kind of like, is it the back of the library? I mean, what? I mean, people. If you show up at the library, you need an Narcan shot. You don't go somewhere. You fix your problem right there, right? Yeah. So you're going to the library and you're like, hey, is he going to make it? Mind your business. Like, all right, just here to check out Clifford the Big Red Dog. Just making sure he's okay. <laughs> My kids wanted to know. It's just, why would you put it in such a public place? I don't understand. Well, it could, all be ages where, event. I don't get it. it could be that's where a lot of users hang out. And then that's, you know. Right. And in all fairness, sure. But it just to me, it was just like, really, the world's first library I and mean, the country's first library. That's what Philly's known for. And that's where, you know, it's just like most people that are hooked on stuff don't go to the library. So it's just kind of interesting. You know, it's like, all right, well, you know, OK, you know, placements, everything. It's just like, listen, I know you're having a hard time. I'll be right back. I just got to go to the library. I'm like, what do you mean the fucking library? I'm over there. I'm OD over here. I'm like, I got to go to the library. I'll be right back. But yeah. <laughs> so I have. I have a question about the dispensers, maybe, you know, um, so they, excuse me, um, so they, like, cost money? No. Okay. Nope. Not to what I saw, okay. which is kind of interesting, because in this country, nothing's free. Right. But, or, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, oh, it costs five bucks. I know you're dying, but, uh, <laughs> shit! <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, I mean that, or it's just like put in whatever you have left in your baggie, and we'll give you the shot. You know, be like that would be. I mean, whatever. But it's I didn't. I had no idea that this existed until I saw that. Um, Austin, when Austin said they got one, and I thought that was like, it's what's um. So the reason that it's our unfortunate topic, it's not unfortunate at all that this is available. It's very fucking unfortunate that this has to be that this had to become available to combat how fucking bad this shit really yeah. is. It's, That's it's unfortunate sucks. that it's like a. It's that, so bad that it has to be a thing, you know. Right. I mean, originally this stuff started out as that police carried it on them so they could bring people back. Now it's so fucking bad that they have dispensers. So clearly, I mean, that's a really it really is cool that that's an option. It cuts out all the red tape. If you're yeah. freaking out, you get to the library. They'll take care of you. That's awesome, but still it's just fuck they're not here's your answer to war on drugs they're still winning fucking solo the sinaloa cartel is still killing it there you go literally well i don't know if there's dispensers here in portland but i didn't, uh, didn't see any but you can go to you can go get them you have yeah, to here. you have to go get them from like a uh what do you call it pharmacy yeah most most I'm I'm saying most, but I dare to say like every bar and restaurant has them. Whoa. Well, because like it's really bad in Portland. It's really like at like the opiate crisis is fucking it's fucking zombies walking around. It's crazy here. It's fucking insane. Insane. You see, I see more fucking syringes than I do flowers. I swear to God. Like, and I'm not going around usually looking for flowers. Or syringes. I'm just saying, you know. You notice one more than the other. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so, but like a lot of, um, like every restaurant and bar, every kitchen has like a first aid, you know, yeah. band-aids and shit like that, you know. And um, most first aid kits now also have the little Narcan things. So I mean, like, geez. it, it, it like if you go in, in my like in our first aid kit at my at my work, there's like five or six little things. Yeah, you know, we haven't had to use it yet, but there's a lot of people that if you look up if you look outside <laughs> in any direction in Portland, there's a lot of people that might need them. You know, right? It's just it, it's unfortunate. 
and that's why it's un and that's why it's our un unfortunate topic because it's just unfortunate that this is a thing. Hell yeah! Who knew that there's that it's so fucking bad that restaurants and bars have shit to bring you out of a fucking op an opioid overdose. Yeah, that's great, but Jesus, you know, I mean, <laughs> that's really bad if everyone's got the drug to keep to save your ass, and. Hopefully, I don't know. I, I mean, I know this doesn't always work, but hopefully if you're in a fucking restaurant and someone's got to snap you out of a heroin overdose, that's enough. I know it's not, but I hope it is. Yeah. Just not to be heavy on a funny show, but hey, fuck it. Just being real. No one wants to see anybody go down like that. I personally don't think anyone deserves to be, have to be hooked on that shit. It's a fucking nightmare. Anyone who starts doing it is immediately told by someone else, welcome to hell. Doesn't sound like a lot of fun to me. And now it's so fucking bad that anywhere you go, you can literally get it out of a vending machine. So that's fucking, to me, it's sad and scary that, that that many people are on it. And the one I read, one of the machines had already given out like a lot of doses. Like it was like crazy. Like they had it up for a week and they gave out like 200 doses. And it was like, Jeez. shit, like they knew what the fuck they were doing. And mm -hmm. plus, I mean, it keeps, it keeps police and EMS and like, you know, kind of kind of away from it you know I, I, the thing with ovd i mean people get scared you know your friend you're both doing drugs your friend gets too fucked up you're fucked up you're gonna help you're gonna help him but you don't want to call an ambulance yeah you know you so, call cops. yeah right so there's a better chance of your friend making it because you'll go get the shot for it. you'll go get the narcan that that's that's one of the probably one of the nicest things that we've done in this fucking country seriously one of the nicest that we've done for free is just be like, you know what? It's so fucking bad. We're just going to have it. Don't worry about it. We're not trying to intervene. We just want you to survive. You know, I think most people in this country understand that only you can get yourself off of this shit and you have to have a ton of conviction to do it. Yeah. But in the meantime, yeah. we're giving you free chances because we don't want to see you go. That's huge. Um, all right. I'm not going to. I don't even know if I'm, what I'm about to say is even a thing. And I'm not saying I believe this because I don't. I'm just putting it out there because it's a thought I had. So I'm sure other people have had it. Having these free chances, like you're saying, like the Narcan and being like, and, and people you people using on the street know that that's a thing, that, that there is, that the everyday Joe has Narcan available to save them. Is that enabling them? And I'm saying I think that way. I'm not saying I think that way. I'm just, it's a thought I had. So I'm like, I've had the I've same had thought. It. Other people have had it. You would you have know? to, because think of it like this. Like, let's say that you're a trap, that you're in a circus and you do the trapeze. All right. And if the net's up, you're going to go for it harder because you know that you're safe. Yeah. So, and of course, there's no way in the world that someone, if not a lot of people that do this, don't think like that. If anything, it, you're right. It can have an adverse effect. It could be like, you know, what am I worried about, man? You know, we're, we're going to go fucking, we'll go to the library and get fucked up. We know what they got, you know, I mean, you can literally think like that. It could be like, and then the problem with an addict is they probably do. So it's, there's nothing, there's nothing we can invent in society that isn't going to have a double-edged sword. It, it's just not, there's no way. Hope, you know, I mean, they gave out a shitload of, they gave out a shitload of doses. And as long as they can continue to give them out, then so I guess that's the best we can do. But like I said, it frees up your fire and EMS and your police for other things. Oh, I mean, not, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, you do Narcan, you're supposed to get your ass to the hospital after that. I would imagine get yourself into a program. Yeah. You know, and no matter how many chances they give you, you keep doing drugs. Eventually you're, you're, <laughs> it's done. Yeah. There's only, you can only take it. Everyone gets so many chances to play with the devil and then it's over. And that's all there is to it. So. I think I said it's unfortunate. That's why it's an unfortunate topic of the week. I think it's awesome that it's out there. But it's a goddamn shame that at the same time, it's a shame that it has to be. Yeah, it is. It is a shame that it is that that way. But I mean, I'm just going to throw this out there. But condom machines aren't free. <laughs> you know, <laughs> government, come on! <laughs> <The> fuck! <laughs> I remember when you were fucking fourteen and you wanted to screw your neighbor, but you were scared to buy condoms. That shouldn't be a problem. Like, it come on, be. Becky, let's go to the library. They got a condom machine right here. Come yeah, on. I, I think I think condoms should be free. I, I think tampons should be free. 
Why should anyone have to pay for any of that? Well, what the fuck? We pay a shitload in taxes. It can't all just be to support drug cartels and crooked fucking lawyers. Something's yeah. got to be for us, right? Yeah. Shit. Goddamn. Oh. Motherfucker. <laughs> Everybody likes to fuck. Okay. So <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I like porn where they take the condom off halfway, but still, that's not safe. You shouldn't do that. You should be wearing it the full <laughs> Yeah, but it's like that's naughty, right? It's risky. <laughs> I'd rather watch someone get monkey pox than get them myself. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're talking about that shit soon yeah right it's a problem <laughs> no, man. i won't i have all these thoughts now it's like oh monkey pox it's like no 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 that monkey back in the box monkey box with you huh? <laughs> tony box <laughs> oh shit all right so now back to something fun um emma hey on. this dog she's driving me nuts i love her all right, so uh, this week we had uh, double duty. We had um, we had an album, Green Jelly, three three three, and we had Dumb and Dumber. Um, what should we start with? Well, um, start with the music. Uh, okay. You texted me something a couple of days ago that I thought was funny. You were like, "How?" You were like, "I should have just picked the um, soundtrack to Dumb and Dumber." <laughs> Because yeah, I mean, no, I was like, I was like, I was thinking about. It, I'm like, man, we're such fucking burnouts. I was like, <laughs> that would have been the like smarter <laughs> thing to do. Right? <laughs> if we only wanted to listen to the bear song. It's like the bear song's on the soundtrack, right? <laughs> yeah, I fucked up. I fucked up. I did. That was my no, idea. No, like, I'm not. I'm just. I could have said, I, I'm, you know, I could have been like, well, let's just do the soundtrack. But I'm like, duh. All right, you know, like. <laughs> well here's the thing the reason i said that is i was watching the movie and i'm like this is a pretty good soundtrack yeah that was the i was like i fucked up i never thought of it that there might be a soundtrack for this movie and there was a shitload of good music in it so yeah i, 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 I yeah I, that's why i text you i'm well, like i kind of fucked up <laughs> and you're well, like oh well let's roll with it. <laughs> it it's cool because um green jelly is fucking awesome actually you know they are. They deserve. And uh, down the road, we should do um, Green Jelly's serial killer album, because every one of their videos was um, every one of their songs is a music video. And I watched Three Little Pigs today. Uh, anyway, we'll talk right. about that. But yeah, that's yeah. and I wanted to say something. I realized I screwed up when I said that Maynard was on the Maynard, the lead singer of Tool, was on the Bear song. He is not. He is actually on the Three Little Pigs song. Oh, okay. He's a, he's the one who says, "Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin." That's me. Well, you, well, you were at least well, you were at least kind of right. You know, it was a song about you know a, an overweight animal. So, well, back to what you said, a bunch of burnouts. So yeah, <laughs> but I really dig the album. I liked it twenty years ago, however long ago, and I really I still like the whole damn album of Green Jellies three three three. I do like that album quite a bit. Um, yeah. I would have to say it's fun because it's a joke band and they, they wore crazy costumes and they met Gore and decided that they could make costumes and cover up the fact that they sucked. That's their verbiage, not mine. Yeah. They said they knew that they were a, a joke band and that they and that was the whole goal. And their songs are like, they make fun of cereal. They make, I mean, you should hear the lyrics. They're hilarious. Yeah. You know, three little pigs. You should see the video for for anyway. That's not on this one. Sorry, but the bear. I didn't check. In, I didn't see if there's a video for the bear song. But um, in any case, what'd you think of the album? Oh, it's a great album. It's an album I've heard uh, a, lot. a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's Green Jelly's just one of those bands where you like. You know, I want to sound this the wrong way, but like almost forget about it, and then you're like, oh wait, yeah, Green Jelly. That's a one of those fucking yeah. like because it's like. Guar kind of already has that that spot, you know. Yes, but like Green Jelly does it a different way, you know. Maybe just as good, you know. Like they're they're awesome too. The album is cool. Uh, the Bear song's great. The Bear song, man, that's like an analogy for life. <laughs> like what it is, man. The bear went over the mountain to see what he could see. Hey, 
<laughs> yeah, he, he the only the only thing he can see is the thing that he sees or whatever. It's a it's an analogy for life, man. No, I love it. The bear went over the mountain to see what he could see. Hey, he went over the mountain to see what he could see. So he went over the mountain to see what he could see. And the other side of the mountain was all that he could see. It's an analogy for life, man. You know, it's just like sometimes all you could see is all you could see. You know? I can't wait to, I'm serious, like I'm thinking like, what little man can I play this song? Oh yeah, I have a grandson. I'm going to pump him full of this shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's kind of like especially you know the bear song it's it's, it's almost like a like a kid's song in a way it is, like, it is it, isn't it a kid's like the bear isn't that a kid's song maybe I, 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 I think it was i just didn't sing well back then but i believe it was a kid's song but i'll have to i'll have to say this i listened to it like four or five times this week and i really like um I, I like just about all of them, but one that I really got into was Anthem. Oh, okay, Anthem, yeah. That one kicks ass. Like, it's like a real, I don't know, like a lot of their songs are joke songs, but this one, like, I give them more credit. I'm like, this sounds pretty fucking good. Just so you know, <laughs> for a joke band, <laughs> it's pretty fucking good. And all their illustrations and the art on the albums are all. Oh, yeah. Great. I had it on CD. Oh, I, now I want, I want a bit, I want this on vinyl just because it's big. You know, like, yeah, look at this shit. <laughs> like, it's fucking rad. I man. totally have this 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 album on vinyl. Um, I like the uh, fight that song, fight the oh, yeah, 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 right after the bear song. I don't know, I just was just like, I was listening to it, and I was just like, yeah, fight, let's fucking, ah, I want, I want to fight, let's do it. I'm just like, any song that's named fight, I'm in, I'm ready. <laughs> Start wrestling your recliner, like, yeah. <laughs> From across the room, <laughs> they're um no that they're they're a good band. They're just like you know, rock, punk. You know, they're just kind of like they don't have really have a genre, but they're kind of kind of punk, but they're kind of just like rock and roll, metal ish. Yeah. You know, in that like you can hear the lyrics. That's yeah. to me like the rock is you can hear the lyrics, and they all you can hear all the lyrics and the. The one thing that like um there's a there's a female in there somewhere for some of the vocals. Yeah, there is. Yeah, that always that always messes me up. Like it sounds like badass, like some chick that'll punch you in the mouth, you know, like just for fucking up her hamburger, just mm, just like that. And like, I like that a lot. I dig it. I don't I want to be punched in the mouth, but I like that there are chicks out there that would do that. Man, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it, but I like to know that. <laughs> I just want to watch. I'm just a voyeur. Okay. Are you going to hit him? Okay. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, that was... um. So, with that, we won't go too deep into them, um, just because we also picked the movie. And there was a point to, like, the reason I, I, I maybe... I, there, I think there was a point that I've connected the two. But, um. so then we also... Well, do you have anything else to say about the album before we... Oh, no, no, no. Cool. So then, of course, an all time favorite for anyone who was fortunate enough to grow up as a kid and watch this movie, but Dumb and Dumber or just got to watch it in general. I I just I, I, I still laugh my ass off, man. I don't give a flying fuck. I love that movie. I love the comedians. I love the people that are in it. I love the scene with um. Oh, I'm having a break. What? Come on. Uh, help me out here. The, the cop. I got the name. Uh, Harlan Williams. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I follow him now. Like I watch his new, newer stuff. I think he's hilarious on stage. So to watch him play the cop, even for two minutes, we're talking about the comedian Harlan Williams. He has a cameo where he plays that this is the person who plays the police officer who ends up drinking piss out of a beer bottle. Yeah. For those of you who know the movie. Yeah. Hey, get out of here, you little pumpkin pie. <laughs> Give me that beer, you little pumpkin pie, haircutted freak. <laughs> the funny thing is, you know, he came up with that line. Because if oh, you yeah. watch his fucking material, he says shit like that on stage. He's a very, like, crowd work comic. Then he says weird shit like that. Pumpkin pie, haircutted freak. That is a <laughs> fucking beautiful. <laughs> Dude, there's, there's so many good lines in that movie. Like, when they're both in that, like, uh, like honeymoon hotel thing. And they're in that... Um, they're What's in the matter? The... Some little Philly break your heart? No, no, it was a girl. It was a girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little Philly breaker. No, it was a girl. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, there and you could tell that both like uh, Jeff Daniels and uh, Jim Carrey were both like like put their heads together and they're a fan of comedy because like there's a yeah. lot of like old school like before before you know before their time comedy like you know slapstick shit like the whole like when they're in the excuse me the orange and blue tuxedos yeah and they came they're coming into like the fundraiser or whatever <laughs> like, they're, they're, like it's like it's like they took a part of they took from like the three stooges or something like that you know right a lot of they're physical doing comedy. like weird slapstick stuff like that like jim carrey like hitting them with the cane behind behind his back you know like <laughs> or like when it just like old school joke where he's like nice hooters the yeah. owls, the owls. owls. <laughs> it's just stupid shit kill him with a cork and the whole time the the, the people that are holding that guy hostage think they're experts i love that shit yeah like, they, just, they yeah. just killed it they just killed that thing with a cork <laughs> like they did it on purpose <laughs> yeah and they didn't even know that they did it they, oh no no that's what i like wow. they're oblivious to everything that's what's great that's like that's literally the whole concept of that movie is they're oblivious as fuck the one scene that is not the one um the one other scene that i've when, when i was a kid you had a vcr so you rewound the shit over and over again mm -hmm. i almost broke a vcr watching that scene where dude's on the payphone and the other guy's trying to get on the payphone and I, there's no other movie i've ever seen where this altercation takes place I've, it's so unique to see that guy they get on there and bang. He's like, and he's like talking to himself outside of the phone booth. You have to be paying attention, not to the guy on the phone, but to the guy trying to get into the phone booth. Yeah. To make a phone oh, call. Yeah. You have to watch just him by himself and you'll laugh your fucking ass off. Hear everything he says. He knocks on it. He's like, Oh, oh, he saw me. Ooh, he saw me. <laughs> and he ignored me. Ooh, I think I liked it. Ooh. Yeah, I no think one I acts like, like that. And any, where did that fucking come from? And then just the whole, like, <laughs> anything you can do, I can do to you. And then, pow, through yeah, a phone yeah. booth gets knocked it's the like, fuck he out. He tells him to get a little closer. Like, I can't hear you. <laughs> what, a little what? closer. <laughs> <laughs> That's old school shit right there, man. That was fucking great. <laughs> yeah. Laid him out, man. I love that. It's like a comedy where someone gets socked in the mouth through a phone booth. That's awesome. <laughs> And uh, we can't we can't forget about the part where this whole the yeah. part of the movie where this whole thing came from. Right. So the reason my one of my the reason I found that I think maybe one way or the other I either recognized the song or I found the song because of the movie. But whatever, I remember watching. I think I knew that I think I knew Green Jelly already. But I remember watching this movie and one day realizing slowly in the background when they're in that hot tamale place, whatever it's called, where they're all they're eating. Dante's Inferno. Inferno. Dante's yeah. Inferno, right? Which yeah. is actually a fucked up book, but I run anyway. Um, and a crazy bar in Portland. <laughs> yeah, true. <Dante's>. true. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you're watching the scene where the uh, the guy, the hit man, is trying to bump them off, they're having they're having lunch together. They're eating hamburgers and they're going back and forth about trying the hottest pepper in the world. And he calls them out. He's like, stop acting like a couple of pussies and had just go at the same time. So they eat the hot peppers and then they lose their shit. They do the ketchup mustard scene, which is amazing. I love that yeah, fucking scene. Jim Carrey like hits them both on oh. the table. <laughs> he just slams them on at the same time. Yeah. Like that's such a good trick because it's like he squeezed them to get the shoot up like that, but like it makes you think that he just hit them hard enough that they shot up <laughs> like that. It's just and then like ah. Right. Exactly. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And yeah, I think that shit was like done. I wonder how many times they did that. I hope it was just one shot. Like it was all pure energy when they put it together because it was fucking hilarious. But in the background during that scene, dude walks away and they decide to load up his burger with those hot ass peppers just to get him back, you know. And um, if you listen in the background, you can hear you can hear the bear song slowly, yeah. slowly at first. But as it builds up, as he like as he comes back and he's getting ready to eat the burger, you can hear the music building, getting louder, getting louder. He bites into the burger, and that's when and then they just the music gets the loudest when he's like basically falls on the ground having a fucking heart attack. And they're like, the other side of the mountain was all that he could see. It's just like, how is this playing right now? Well, this guy's having a fucking heart attack, and they're giving him pills and poison and all this shit. It doesn't make any sense. 
but it's so awesome that they picked Green Jelly yeah. to play in Dante's Inferno in the middle of nowhere. I don't know why, but it always it's a slow buildup of that particular song in a comedy that always caught me off guard. It's like, I don't know who the director is personally, but whoever picked this music right. knew their shit and decided Green Jelly would fit great right here. And everyone, <laughs> else in the, everyone else in the world is like, who the fuck is Green Jelly? And this director's like, trust me, <laughs> like this is going to work. And it did. It's such a, I, there's no other Green Jelly song in any movie I've ever seen. And here it is in a comedy, one of my favorite of all time. And at the same point in my life, I was into that movie. I was into that band. Just right. not not coincident. It wasn't a coincidence. I mean, just coincidentally, and it was just funny as hell to watch that and be like, "That's fucking Green Jelly! Oh my god! Holy shit! This is great! I love this!" So, if you watch that scene and you picked up on it, I thought it was pretty damn funny and pretty cool. Pretty hardcore scene for a dude to have a heart attack on, and then you know, peppers and pills. <laughs> I know <laughs> pills are good. Pills, pills are, are good, good. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's so funny god that movie's fucking fantastic it gets it's 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 as good as it always was every time you watch it like every time you watch it it's like just as good i love I, it i can't i don't watch it all the time but every time i do watch it i finish the whole damn thing and i watch my ass off i i can't <laughs> help myself it's a fucking classic if it if it got you when you were a kid it probably still gets you yeah Oh, I like the second one too. We're not talking about that one, but I I think they did. I mean, they repeated the humor, and I liked it. I know it could have come out two years after the first one; it would have been a hell of a lot more successful. But still, they had it. They had a good recipe. You're talking about the one where they, when... the one that came out, the one where they did the second, not the the sequels without them in it. The one, the second, like the Dumb and Dumber, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, because there's like that. There was like one that they had different actors play. Yeah, like how they met each other. Yeah, a prequel, right? It's pretty. No, I didn't no. like that. I guess and it was then, Dumb and Dumber Two or whatever. I don't know what, but anyway, the second one with those two guys back in it, Jeff Daniels and Jim Carrey. Yeah, I thought that one was just as funny. But I um, remember watching it. Um, I don't remember. I don't remember anything about it. I know. I know. I watched it, but I think it's worth. I've yeah. I've seen it a few times. I think it's funny, but you got to be into that shit. Yeah. yeah anyway we'll <laughs> maybe we'll land on that one one day but right um so hopefully you guys um you guys enjoyed that or you know got something out of it had fun watching it if you watched it if not and you're intrigued please do please check it out or if all you can do is listen to the music definitely check out green jelly the shit is funny and it's you can understand it it's rot it rocks it's fun yeah um um so yeah that's about it on on that right yeah yeah Yep. All right. Um, so we're gonna do a, kind of a new thing that we kind of did, but like never really announced. Is like we're gonna do like what we thought about, you know, give you a scale from one to ten on what we thought about the, you know, who the artists or who we were talking about. So this time it's gonna be one from one to ten. You know, being one being you didn't like it, ten mean you loved it. Pretty simple. Um. So one to ten, what'd you think of Green Jelly? Three, 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 and what'd you think of Dumb and Dumber? I'll give um. We're so just to be just to clarify, we're only giving solid numbers, or is there a point five? You can do a point five. Okay, just so we know the rules, and um, so I would say an eight point five for Green Jelly, and I would go ahead and give Dumb and Dumber a nine and a nine a nine point five. Cool. Okay. All right. Yep. Scale of one to ten for me, I will give. Green Jelly and an eight, and I will give Dumb and Dumber uh, a solid ten. Sick. And if you guys want to uh, tell us what you know, scale of one to ten, how much you guys liked it um, when we post this episode, uh, just leave that in the comments, just for fun. Just you know, if you want to. Yeah, just just uh, yeah, open communication. Fucking tell us what you think. You got an opinion? We want to hear it. If you listen to the album three months from now, don't give a shit. Throw it in the comments that week. We don't care. Okay. Just curious if just curious what you guys think of the stuff we're throwing out there. If you like it or not. If you're a dumb and dumber fan, got a favorite scene, throw it in there. Seriously, we I can't even remember all the funny shit in that movie. I, I just can't. But it's great. I love it. It's so fucking funny. If I can find me a heart-shaped bathtub, we're gonna go ahead and take some, we're gonna 
We're getting some uh, face shots of that motherfucker. That's for sure. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> some All right. Part. No, that was a girl. <laughs> a filly is actually like a small horse. I looked it up. So <laughs> <laughs> he was he was right in what he said. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> I was yeah. in a place like this once. Not this fancy, but nice. <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck did they find that tub? God damn oh, it. It's beautiful. It's great. It's so good. And their feet are hanging out the end. I love oh. that. <laughs> That's a fucking t-shirt right there. That's just that picture of those two assholes sitting there like that. It's terrific. Oh, shit. Well, I'm um, getting near the end of the show. Um, time for the wheel. Time for the wheel. All right. The list. Okay, so let's see here. What do we got on the list? The list, the list. All right. All right, so at the number one spot, we have the Three from Hell movie from Rob Zombie, along with the soundtrack. And then number two, we've got Wheeler Walker Jr. with Sex, Drugs, and Country Music. Number three is Alex's uh, spot. So if he lands on that, if we land on that, Alex has to come up with something off the top of his head. Number four, um, God Flesh, a world let only by fire. Number five is Nefix, Fight Back Collection. Number six is The Coasters, self-titled album. Number seven, if it lands on that one, I got to pick something off the top of my head. It's Number eight is The Melvins. It's kind Sorry? of dark. So that's a T. I know it's dark, but it's a T. Oh, yeah, T. <laughs> T for tone for this guy. Um, number eight, the Melvin's newest record, Five Legged like Dog. Number nine is Rammstein's newest record, Zeet. And number 10, um, something I came we came across today, checked it out for the show, thought it sounded pretty cool. Um, a band called Sparks and their album, Kimono My House. If that shit doesn't sound fun, I don't know what does. So. <laughs> Those are the 10 options. Spin it, you beautiful bastard. All right. Yeah, buddy. Six. Six. The Coasters, self-titled right. album. Cool. Going a little little further back there. So the Coasters are going to be like oldies type shit. You will like it. Your woman might too if you have one or your partner. So please feel free to turn it on and get romantic. Hmm. That song, um, Down in Mexico, if you haven't heard that, that's on that album. It is that fucking album. awesome. It's a danceable tune, so feel free. Play it while, you make, while you're cooking up dinner. Just don't cut your damn fingers off, okay? Put on your dancing shoes. Safety first. And so then... um, if you liked, uh, if you enjoyed this episode, let somebody know. We don't mind. We like it. Yeah. <laughs> Pass it on. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, don't tell anybody. But if you do, please do tell someone. Um. And then, yeah, Alex has all the deets. Like, subscribe uh, on YouTube. Um, if you have a a band, an artist, a soundtrack, a movie, um, please let us know in the comments on YouTube or uh, on Instagram, titfoo69. Drop us a DM, slide into our DMs, and just make sure it is a, a band and, the, and uh, an in particular album. And then, um, or movie and soundtrack, whatever you know, the, you know the drill. So, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hell yeah! Everything he said, and plus, bye bye. Bye bye.